played professional sports for 14 years, including high school, and I'm making a comeback. I'm a very competitive person, I grant you, but I ain't got no testosterone imbalance. With that little mustache you busting out, looks like you should be talking about some hormone problems, girl. Excuse me? What did you say? Oh, oh, nothing. Damn, baby, you're so ugly you make blind kids cry. BJ, you better stop being a bully just because I'm not into the jock scene. I like sensitive guys, you know, like actors or rock stars or that kind of thing. Not some great big hulking giant that has to tell everyone how important he is. Well, I didn't realize we were trying to impress each other here, sweet thing. I was thinking we was here to discuss my new exercise video or talk about my possible comeback in professional football. Not sitting here flirting with each other. I'm a married man. I'm on my seventh wife. So you got a big family, all those wives. That's fantastic. Not really. You see, I really like family, especially when some show up you didn't know existed. I tell you, Father's Day, I'm scared to go to my mailbox. My big heart has caused me a lot of heartache, but when you're in the public eye, you can't always tell what people are about. BJ has met some real magnificent people. Seven wives. That's fantastic. No, I have one wife. I had six before that. So you downsized, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. If you want to win in life, you have to change players. You can't play on the same team all the time. So, oh my God, isn't this getting intimate, BJ? I feel like we are really connecting. Yeah, I'd like to connect with you. Other men may fumble, but I go into the trenches like a doleman. That's the actual part of my video. What are you talking about? Well, as you know, Running the ball is like making romance. And one day when I was going for a touchdown, if you know what I'm saying, I had a great idea. You see all these fitness videos on television? It's always that idiot fool in leotards prancing about giving it the skinny thing. And I say, what is this? I mean, what in the world is this? These people ain't fit. They ain't got a clue. When you're fit, you know it. If you come into the locker room, you know I fit for football able to wrestle and pounce and hurt somebody for an hour straight. That's what people need. If someone comes to jack your ride, are you going to uh, bust a aerobic move? Hell no. But when you know how to grab another man by the face mask and twist him around and, and so he tears ligaments in his back and never play again, I mean, that's some real useful everyday stuff. And I should know. I invented it. You know, I just don't want to talk about football anymore. Well, take dating or washing the car. What good is a leotard when you're washing the car? But put a man in a helmet and a cup, and he can wash the car in dignity. That's fighting fit for football. A really very simple program. The best way to get your body fit is to have total disregard for your body. Every now and then you wake up and come out of a concussion and say, Damn, I look good. <laughs> BJ, you talk funny. We'll be back on KChat right after these messages. Are you tired of your couches getting ruined? Oh, Grandpa. I made tinkles again. If you've got old people cluttering up your home, why not send them to Musty Pines? We'll help bring back dignity, and we promise it will be the best three months of their lives. They'll enjoy bingo, complaining, mumbling incoherently, skinny dipping and organ donation. And once a month, it's our famous Lucky Dip medication switching night. Musty Pines is located at a luxurious location overlooking Vice City's state-of-the-art sanitation facilities. You can still visit your old people, but now... Do. After they pass on to something better, guaranteed in three months or less, you can start enjoying their money. Finally, you can have quality family time again. Musty Pines. Now, you don't have to say goodbye. drive through service also available. He was just the boy next door. Hi, well, hello there, Danny. I didn't know it was hockey season. Hey, can I borrow a knife? A deadly curse. A deranged killer. A small town in tears. Knife After Dark. Rated R for retarded. Ew, that's gross, BJ. Stop hitting on me. Hi, I'm Amy, and you're on K-Chat. So, what do you need to do for BJ's fit for football? Well, Angela, anybody can do it. What you need is a real expensive gym, a team of trainers, medical practitioners, dietitians, a big crowd, and a opponent who wants you dead. Dead in the dirt. I mean, a nasty, blood-sucking leech of a man who will destroy you if you don't destroy him first. A man you like set animals on. 
He's the enemy. And you sit in your foxhole till it's time just right, and then you pounce, baby, like a kitty cat on catnip. I'll sack a man, pile drive him hard, again and again, because the idiot comes my way. I'll nail him every time. This video sounds like a lot of fun. Fun? Fun? You think it's fun when grown men cry in mortal agony? When you're so scared of what you're going to do to a man to step outside yourself like an astral projection and police go Kent State on you and, and people are crying and bleeding and, and, and pouncing each other in the face? And that's just in the locker room before the game. That's your idea of fun? Yeah, I, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, mine too. That's why I'm making a comeback. I've been retired two years, and I'm telling you, selling cars or appearing in soft drink commercials is not fun compared to having 50,000 low IQ morons in Green Bay or, or Tampa or Liberty City or whatever screaming how they want you dead just because you're playing for the Mambas. That's actualizing the self. Wow, that sounds interesting. Tell me about it. I am doing. I, I'm fin to... Hey, wait a minute. Are you reading a book over there doing this interview? No, no, I can hardly read. Get on with it. I'm trying to, sweets. You best listen. The comeback is a real deal. B.J. Smith, six-year Pro Bowl MVP, the man responsible for more broken bones than anyone since people had legs. I'm a fiddler crab. You can rip my arms off, and I'll just moat and grow new ones. Where? Right here, right now. Let's get it on. Of course. I, I mean, when? Uh, soon, baby. Uh, real soon. But, and don't call it a comeback. Like the song said, I'll whoop your ass. And this time, I'm doing it my way. Ignorant fools, they gave me nothing to work with. The owners, I mean. What owners are you talking about? The owners of the team. They gave me nothing. They're the reason my marriage failed. I worked my ass off all those years sweating blood and, and puking my soul out, and they treat me like a tractor. Roll me around, treat me no better than the dogs. The guys that got hurt, they never saw a penny out of those monsters. That's just like Jade. Who's Jade? She a fox? My friend. She's a goth. She got sacked for wearing makeup and an I Hate Life t-shirt to work and never saw a penny. <laughs> she like, um, football stars? She teaches kindergarten, professionally. You know, I know a lot of players who need to go back to school after they finish playing. It's a tough life and you lose something. What did you lose? Hope, diction, something. It's brutal out there. That's just like Jade. Those kids are evil little brats. Listen, are you going to talk about your freaky friends who dress like a funeral? I thought we were here to talk about BJ. BJ Smith, and I feel alive. I mean, really alive. Ain't nothing more and bigger than holding a man's head in your hands and looking him in the eyes and saying, I can kill you in one second, old man. And he says, I got a wife. And you say, give me all the money in your cash register. What are you talking about? <gasps> BJ, are those muscles real? That's funny you should ask, because the answer is yes. They ain't implants or nothing. Wow, you're enormous. <laughs> nah, this guy's twice my size, but I'm quick, rich, and angry, like a Republican. So, oh, um, I see. Look, I ain't got anything more to say to you, and I can't fall in love with another guest or I'll get sacked. So let's go to the phones. Who's on line one? Hey, Amy, I'm a first-time caller. How you doing? I love your show. Sort of. BJ, man, you're awesome. Here's my question. How'd you play that game against San Andreas with two broken legs? Oh, I can't believe I'm talking to you. Wow, man, I don't know what to say. This is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> well, why the hell you call in? Don't worry, I'm a professional. The method I use in a game against essays is actually a part of my exercise video. When in doubt, go for the groin. I hope that answers your question. That's a problem with the public. Fans, <laughs> I get it all the time. Know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I get that all the time. People say, are you that girl off the television in that show? And I say, no, I'm the girl from the radio. I just look like her. Anyway, BJ, that's all we have time for for now. Thanks, Amy. And um, look after that mustache. Okay. Thank you. I'll be back on K-Chat after these messages from our sponsors. Don't go away. Are you tired of Dad? Dad, no one wants to hear your stupid Vietnam story. Are you tired of Mom? Hi. Hey, Angel, do you want to read a book or go outside? No! The arcade comes to your living room only without the creepy guys offering to show you puppies. Awesome! Betty Genitron, you can play video games just like you were in the arcade. Excellent! 
Degenitron. The Degenitron gaming system plays three exciting games, including Defender of the Faith, where you save the green dots with your fantastic flying red square. Cool. Monkey's Paradise, where you swing from green dot to green dot with your red square monkey. That's red. And Penetrator, where you smash the green dots deep inside the mysterious red square. Wow. The Degenitron brings arcade realism to your living room. It can even take quarters, and a strange, sweaty man comes by to empty the machine on Fridays. Degenitron! Degenitron, fighting the evil of boredom. I'll never go to school again, Degenitron! Do you have dry mouth? I sure do. It protects your teeth, bites infection, and lubricates your food. But what happens when you run out of saliva? Help me, I can't talk. For personal dryness upstairs, it's Salivex. Wow, I can spit again. Salivex is more than saliva in a can. Salivex improves consumption efficiency by 50%. Coating your throat with cooking oil to have that extra piece of cake or bowl of kitty litter. After a night out, my tongue tasted like carpet. It was embarrassing. Now with Salivex, I can eat a whole box of crackers or lick my life partner's stamp collection all night. It's like having a salivation army in my mouth. Now I can suck a lollipop for as long as I want. Salivex tastes like your own saliva. That's because at Salivex's state-of-the-art production facilities, we use salivation philanthropists who make Salivex all day. Salivex, when it comes to personal dryness upstairs, we're deadly serious. Welcome back to KJAT. My next guest is the star of the hit show, Just the Five of Us, where he appears as the rich father of a family of misfits. But more recently, he's working on the controversial theater piece, In the Future, There Will Be Robots, Claude Maginot. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Amy. However, you have mispronounced my name. It's Madge, which rhymes with badge, uh, as in duh, and no, as in more than you, Magino. Anyway, thank you for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure to discuss my art. Yes, you're so funny. Now, Claude, you're an interesting man, if you don't mind me saying so myself. Because on the one hand, you're on the funniest show in the whole wide world, just the five of us, and on the other, you do those weird theater dance shows which aren't funny. Yes, thank you, technical school dropout. I'm sure sitting here talking all day is terribly difficult. Juilliard is not. In the Future There Will Be Robots is not a funny piece. It deals with the most important issues in the world today. Love, pain, suffering, skin-tight pants, and well-stretched groin muscles. But see, music has no name, Amy. It's about depth and texture and sense of community that emerges from the struggle going on within all of us, between man and machine, between the angel and the beast. It's as if Petrushka and Leonard Bernstein were in a ferocious dance competition with switchblades. That is passion, my dear. Um, okay. So it's a bit like just the five of us. What a show! I love Jimmy. He's so cute, even though he looks so young. I'd rather not talk about my complications working with him. I'm a performer. I express myself any way I can. While I'd never attempt to describe just the five of us as anything other than a worshipless pap, I need to support my serious art. It's like stealing a boombox to do live interpretive dance. If I bring joy to people's hearts doing an interpretation of a tree in the park, who is harmed? There is a value I derive from art, as a man, as a creator, and that is this. Never overestimate the dreadfulness of the mass market, the degrading excess of the culture, or the horrors that we all have within it. Great, yeah, um, n me too. But as Mr. Chesterfield, you're so funny. What is it you say? Not in my house. <laughs> That gets me every time, especially after the drunken tramp you adopted has wet himself. Oh, say it for me, please. As they say in France, matrice. Please. Not in my house. Please. I came on your fine show to discuss art, not people that whore themselves out on the altar of commercial success, dancing like a puppet alongside a genetic freak, although I do that too. Okay, Moody. So, what do you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know. My performance at the Hollywood Bowl, perhaps. There are some that attend the concert inside. 
I am the concert outside myself. In the parking lot where we build bonfires and dance, it comes back to the seriousness of my purpose. At a young age, I held puppet shows on the corner that had people weeping and lying down in the streets. It's about movement, about encouraging ordinary working class people that there is something enervating about a modern dance performance. That seeing in the future there will be robots will change your life no matter what your life's like now. Kind of like getting a new haircut. Yes, exactly. No, nothing like a new haircut, you halfwit. This is movement. Watch my hand. Yes, movement. There's a manatee on stage. See? He cannot hear from the wall of Wagner around him. We have lasers that shoot him down, cut him free, free his soul from the bondage of the past. And then on stage, we have snow that falls and represents love in all its forms. The robot makes a snow angel, and we begin to cry. Close curtain. Um, okay. Well, I love just the five of us. Please, 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 enough! Five succeeds while robots starve. Attendance has been poor. If I were opening this with the Orchestra Philharmonica di Jalapa in Mexico, there would be riots in the streets with small children giving me flowers and weeping. Here in Vice City, they wouldn't know art unless it came as a tube of beef jerky. They told me, Claude, it can't be done. Vice City is for sun worshippers and Philistines. And I told them, no. I told them, if I'm directing a work of commercial dross down there, I must save my soul with some serious art. But to be honest, Amy, they were <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel ahead of my time. The best artists are ignored. I mean, surely any right-minded person would rather spend an evening watching me express the meaning of space as I move delicately across the stage in the dance of desire and denigration than flopping around in a disco or a nightclub or sucking the electric teat of television. I know I would. God, I mean, what is wrong with you people? God, my hair. What? My hair is all wrong. It clashes with my dress. Zeus, Cicero, Shakespeare, Flaubert, someone. Please save me from this hellhole. My dear, you are so ignorant. I'm trying to save you, to save everyone. You don't see the art around you. Are you in search of old Lang Syne's, singing Madame a Butterfly on a windowsill, or relegating yourself to a cricket in Huckleberry Finn? I am a movement that conquers love while you complain about your dress. Know you not how important my mission be? Right. Cool. Okay, Mr. Chesterfield, I mean, <laughs> Mr. Magonaut, you've got to hang in there. You're on K-Chat, and I'll be right of the Leo and Purex, we understand that sometimes life throws you a curveball. We help our blue chip clients get their lives back after circumstances have conspired against them. Just listen. It was an unfortunate accident what happened to my wife on that precarious cliff. The Leo and Furex can't bring my wife back, but they made sure I didn't end up in the slammer. I was unfortunate enough to be found with 15 kilos in my spare tire. I was so mad at the auto repair shop that sold me that tire. Thanks to De Leon Furex, the district attorney saw it that way, too. Uh, I accidentally torched a Quickie Mart when my medication ran out. <laughs> De Leon Furex helped me and the community by ensuring a healthy settlement from the pharmaceutical company. At De Leo and Furex, we understand the judicial system and will ensure the truth is heard, no matter how improbable. We're not cheap, but what price can you put on truth? Call the Leo and Furex today at 866-974-2333. That's 866-9-SHADY. The Leo and Furex. Accidents happen, and we'll prove it. The store leading the fight against communism is having a blowout sale. Ammunition has a wide array of peacemakers. Come by Ammunition on Militia Mondays, exercise your Second Amendment rights, and get 10% off all armor-piercing bullets. We're the only gun store that lets you try it before you buy it. Need anti-tank missiles? We've got them. Flamethrowers? Oh, yeah. No credit? No problem. No money down. 90 days, same as cash. Shoot now, pay later. 
During the 10-minute waiting period, fire off a few rounds of the ammunition gun range, featuring faces of famous commie pinkos. Come by ammunition and register to win an anti-aircraft gun actually used when we whooped Australia's ass. This weekend is the Ammunition Film Festival with free screenings of the documentary Red Dawn. Ammunition, protecting your rights. You're back on Gay Chat with me, Amy, and my special guest. Let's go to the phones. Mr. Maganard, Bruce from Prawn Island here. Big fan of the show, Mr. Madge. No, big fan. Dude, I don't know about the, the robot thing. It, it, it's weird. Quickly, is he really 42? Does he shop in the kids' aisle? Does he get on roller coaster rides? I mean, what's the deal? Does he pay half price at the movie? No comment. Next caller. Oh, my God. Trauma. I meant that... That's my line. I'm supposed to say that. Oh, God, this guy is such a dick. Oh, next caller. Oh, who's on the line? I mean, who's on line? Oh, what number is it? Who, who's on the line? Hello, Claude. This is Morgan. I'm just vacationing down here, having finished my doctoral thesis into images of young boys in post-lapsarian Greece and the erotic understatement of the fugue in contemporary Baroque. Fascinating stuff. Mmm. Do you have a question? I'm confused. No, woman. I just wanted to tell Claude about my thesis and discuss his bleaker death in Venice street period. Of course I have a question, you silly girl. Claude, I saw robots. Big fan, and that's praise indeed coming from me. I normally hate anything humanity has achieved since 1836. But one thing fascinated me. Claude, about the show, the pants. They were so tight. So fitted. How do you get such a marvelous, close, sequin figure hugging fit and still? Hmm? Oh, and were the sequins a reference to lasers? Yes, yes. My, my, I agree. Thanks for calling. That is an important question. You see, I'm an important person, and I especially think so. It is really important for people to see my form move through space in very tight pants, or the effect is ruined. Interpretive dance cannot be expressed in baggy clothing. It's like a violin parade. Otherwise, why have a love story with a manatee and the lasers? It's very important. You're kind of creepy. You're nothing like you are on the show. You're so funny there, joking with the family and putting out the fire started by the homeless guy and starting group hugs. But in real life, you're just plain creepy. You won't even tell us how old Jimmy is. All you talk about is Archie stuff like that nobody understands because it's complicated and how tight your pants are. That's not true. I also discussed love and passion and amenity and the lasers. You, my dear, could use all three. You, my dear, are a Philistine. I'm sorry, but this is one of the most degrading, debasing, horrific, unedifying, opportunistic things I have ever done in my life since that whole Rake's Progress lawnmower commercial. I feel dirty, like I just sat in something. You did. Our last guest was taken violently ill. Yes, well, such is the plight of radio. Rather than grumble like Leporello or a taxi driver about my duties cleaning the back seat, I shall bid you adieu. Okay, thanks, Claude. Next, we have a very important guest who doesn't dance like a weird jerk. We'll be back right after this. You're on K-Chat. Knights of the Road, here's your stallion. The car for freedom. freedom. The car for hot excitement. The car for a man who is alone against the elements. The Waibatsu Thunder. The pride is back. It's the power of a compact. It looks small, but it's so big. Fuel injected. Inject me. My Batsu Thunder. On the toll road of life, you have to pay to prove you can. Live the emotion of an individual. Thunder. The awesome power of nature distilled into one vehicle. Wow. Because after you get struck by lightning, there's thunder. The My Batsu Thunder. <laughs> What's this I found under your bed? The only Engels you're going to read is Laura Engels Wilder. If you think your child might be a red, here are some warning signs. They read complicated literature and have concern for their fellow man. They even like to share. Tell your kids if someone approaches them with pamphlets about recycling, an invitation to a labor rally, or showing any doubts about the fairness of our system, then they should find a teacher or a policeman immediately. 
Do yourself a favor. Take both hands off the wheel and touch the stereo. Do you feel the power? Ah, oh, yes, friend. There's a lot of evil in the world, but there is also light. And I have been sent to shine a light on all degenerates, philanderers, liberals, and other evildoers and expose them for what they really are. Don't waste your money on unnecessary and... Give it to me. There's only one thing that will save you. A highly fortified structure in the shape of the most powerful thing on the planet. Me. Degenerates will ruin this great city. In my wonderful book, I tell of the impending disaster about to befall this planet. Nuclear holocaust, plagues of flying rodents, the seas rising up and turning yellow. It is coming. It is written by me. But you can save yourself. Contribute to the Pastor Richard Salvation Statue Fund. Pick up your telephone. Call now. 1-866-9-SAVE-ME. Hi, and welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're listening to K-Chat by City's only commercial talk station, the place where the stars shine in conversation with you and me. I'm Amy Schechenhausen. My next guest is a rising star in the world of North mythology. He's appeared in several best-selling infomercials and travels the globe speaking at corporate training camps. His books and audio cassettes are sold around the world. <laughs> he is Valhalla's finest deity and motivational speaker, Thor. Hi. Hello, Amy. I'm happy to be here. It's been a long journey. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know much about you. I mean, I read Beowulf. Well, I didn't, but I read the cover. But, like, you're a Viking, right? Did the tunic and goatskin boots give you a clue, maybe? I am a Viking, and a Viking that will not only help you unleash the Furies, but unleash yourself. It's in my Thor's Norse Power program. Okay. I'm a little confused. Well, I'm a lot confused. I was taught in school that Vikings were bloodthirsty and violent. An elder once told me, you must unlearn what you have learned. Of course, then he died of the Green Plague. There are some Vikings that are a bloodthirsty lot, yes, but no more than anyone else, really. We're a nomadic people, Amy. We have cold fire in our souls. Ye have that fire too, Amy. You've just lost it since you've gotten television. Now, that being said, I'll answer your question. We are mostly nonviolent, though many of the Vikings travel to Scotland. And mind you, anyone who goes there will turn bloodthirsty. You can't understand what the lot are saying. It's all a four, Recklin, a boot, Diné. It's enough to make you want to burn a village to the ground. That's why, in my cassette series, I talk about the importance of communication. You see, Amy, men and women live in different worlds. We use different words. A group of men talk about what they've killed, how to start a fire, who has the best long boat. Women want to talk about keeping the communal long or tidy and their feelings. When I'm raiding a village, I don't need to be talking about feelings. It's time for action. Great. So is that all there is to being a Viking? Pillaging? No, lass, no. Pillaging and battle are important, but we admire poetry as well. As long as it's poems about whacking someone in with a double-handed battle axe. What's holding you back, Amy? In Chapter 3 of my book, I talk about listening to the bloodthirsty water spirit. It's really quite important if you want to enter Valhalla. I think I went there last night. Oh, no, mm -mm, that was Malibu. But it's the same sort of thing. Valhalla was that golf club, wasn't it? So, 1983. But right, what does being a Viking have to do with anything? This is the 20th century. We have electricity, penicillin, jet planes, implants. Well, I don't, but I want some, but I heard the operation is really gross. You live like it's 982 A.D. or something. Mind ye tongue, wench, lest I cut it out. Deep down, all of you listening to me say, Thor, yes, I'd like to unleash the Viking within. Maybe you go camping once a year or hunting and wonder why it feels so natural. That's because it is. Too much of this denying your instincts. Men shaving. You know, deep down in the pit of your soul, you wish you could crouch in the grass with flies biting your face, afraid to move for fear of alerting the beasts, covering yourself with yak urine to thwart your smell. Then, a beast draws close. You pounce, bringing your battle axe on its skull. Man and animal at that moment. One and the same in a terrible beauty. Then you drag the carcass back to camp and celebrate by eating its heart. Some people, they only do this once in a lifetime. I do this every day, and so can you. All it takes is some positive thinking. Just attend my Unleash the Norse Within weekend. When you are finished, you will say, I am a god. Nobody can stop me. I crush my enemies and dance on their funeral pyres. This is very helpful for living in suburbia, Amy, and I should know. I really don't understand how. Oh, it's very helpful. Maybe a neighbor is tossing his leaf clippings on your lawn or looking at your woman or harboring desires regarding your longboat. 
You enslave his children, set his house on fire. He shall not bother you again. <laughs> it must be nice to have you as a neighbor, not. I live in no place longer than needed to fulfill my goals, taking slaves, valuables, and food. Goal setting is very important, Amy, not just in football. You're very weird and creeping me out a bit, but whatever. No weirder than anything else. So, what do you think of Vice City? Ah, I like it very much. Your women here are prepared for battle. They are large, not like those scrawny things to the north. A woman who weeps well provides for her man. You cannot set sail for robbing and pillaging on an empty stomach. It's like the story of the parson's wife and the troll. I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Great Carl Erson, ye mainlanders have no historical perspective. Read the runes. It's all right there. Talk to a grandparent. But no, ye cast people out like rubbish. Wisdom is not to be treated so lightly. When my father grew old, I sat with him day and night, absorbing his wisdom, learning about the demons and where the wickedness resides in men's hearts. Then as his time grew near, I built a large pyre, burnt him and his wife while communing with Odin's spirit. Careful. Musty Pines is a sponsor of the show. Oh, Grody, what are you doing? I'm just adjusting myself, she-devil. Wearing these animal hides does get a bit itchy. Um, okay. You never answered my question. What do you think of Vice City? Your land and people have a lot in common with mine. You see, we too fled our homes due to lack of food, overpopulation, and the bitter cold. And, mind ye, darting out to raid passing ships is fine, but we needed a new land to have our way with. Granted, we roll and sail to an area, land in force, and burn down a local monastery or village, whereas you come in, destroy all the creatures, and sell plastic versions of them. You did a fine job pillaging these lands, but you should have done something about Canada. Wait a minute there, Buster. My mother's half Canadian. Oh, what are you going to do, wench? Sweep the ice furiously at me? Ha! Huh. Socialized medicine? Nay, nah, you did it all wrong. You should have continued to the north and finished things off. I talk about this in me motivational learning tapes. That, and beware the magpie. Tis the devil. Evil reigneth when darkness falls. Are you married? You seem like a tough character to live with. Aye, me wife Helga. What a hag. This show is not sexist, whatever certain bearded women might say. Women are people too. I'd appreciate... Go live in a chimney, ye troll. You 20th century women are all the same. And me hag Helga, she fell prey to your uppity ways. She says to me, Thor, I ain't having no mead no more. I'm going to meetings. See, that's your problem. Soon as you sort something out, you have to go preaching from the rooftops to everyone else how to live, not pillage nor plunder no more, but live in boxes. Then she says, Thor, I'm getting me stomach stapled. I look fat and now fitteth two yak skins, where previously twas only one. I say, wench, don't come crying to me when we're in a long boat crossing the straits for two moons, and you're all skin and bones. A man needs something to grab onto. I ain't her fault. A cursed pixie goblin got her. Pixie goblin? What kind of weird ancient nonsense are you talking about? Now, Thor, I've got to ask you, how old are you? I am as old as a fjords, as young as a newborn lamb. Are you shy about your age? <laughs> Just lie about it, like my mom. Thor is never shy. Thor is mighty. Thor is a god. And where are you from? From the beginning of the flat earth, where the sun meets the sky. Oh, right. By the beach. Great. Let's take a commercial break. We'll be right back with Thor. He's a real Viking. Yeah, right. Whatever. Hello. I am Fernando Martinez. I think by now you know I am an emotional kind of guy. People stop me in the street and say, Fernando, what the hell is wrong with me? Silk shirt, hairy chest, enough aftershave to drown a household pet, but I still cannot get a woman. I tell them you are an ignorant fool. Without a symbol of power and fertility around your neck, what kind of woman is going to respect you? That is why I have teamed up with Medallion Man, the shop for medallion needs. Medallion Man caters to all levels of masculinity. For the strong, silent type, a medallion the size of a hubcap will say everything that needs to be said. Even singing medallions for the Casanova, who knows, music is the food of love. Model trains, dollhouses, diapers, whatever your interest, we've got a medallion for you. Don't forget, every woman knows if you can't support a medallion, you can't support a family. We have some sad news for you. Rock and roll is dead and pop is in! Why not discover the excitement of the science of music yourself at Synth and Son, the home of keyboards? Thanks to the science of music, you don't need musical talent to make great music. Just listen. 
I created that just by pressing a button. Synthesizers are the new wave. Why work hard on difficult compositions when a machine can make music better than you've ever dreamed of? You'll be the hit of the party. It's perfect for in-restaurant entertainment, cover bands, and funerals. Make fugues funky and death marches danceable. It's the science of music at Synth, Synth, Synth and Son. Remember, you don't know you're a musician until you try. We're back on K-Chat with me, Amy, and my guest is Thor, Viking warrior and elf help guru. Do you have a last name? Oh, whatever. Anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking about the wisdom of the ancients. There are many hurdles in life, Amy. I remember one of the first bits of fan mail I got. It came by bottle in the sea. A man of Lollard Island said, A tiny woman came to our farm and swept in front of our door. A woodland troll has carried off my woman in the dead of night. Give me wisdom, Thor. So, what did you tell him? Hi, Amy. It was obvious the Black Plague had visited his home. As sure as you can't be a midwife to a fairy, expect wisdom from a fool, or find a good meal downtown on a Saturday night. Okay. I don't, um... I really have nothing to ask you because I really don't think we're bonding quite right here. I'm more than a little confused. Let's go to the phones. You're on K-Chat with Thor. Yes, hello, Thor. My name's Jay. I'm a huge fan, man. Your book really helped me get through puberty. Everyone else was into vampires and stuff. I just got into the Viking thing. It's pretty cool. It's been working pretty well for me. Anyway, my girlfriend and I, we fight all the time. She's always calling to check up on me. It really totally sucks. It's a drag. Like, I hang out at the strip mall with all my boys, and she shows up. Is there any advice you can give me? Ah, yes. There was a man who asked for a night's lodging at a certain farm on the eve of Moundy Thursday. Or maybe it was Fat Tuesday. Anyway, in the course of the night, the old woman of the house took out a horn of salve and smeared herself with it from head to toe. She then climbed on top of the stove, sat astride a sweeping broom, and began to... Um, hello, excuse me, what the hell are you talking about? Reading from the runes, wench. What kind of rune is that? Aye, it's a man's rune, and not appropriate for the warrior under 18 years old. But there's a moral at the end. Are you still there, Fair Jay? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Do you love this woman? Yeah, I, I think so. She's really special. Especially in the back seat, if you know what I mean, Thor. Then behead her and parade thy love around on a stick for the world to admire. Wow, cool. Thanks, Thor. Okay, I'd like to throw you out, but you've got an enormous sword and, uh, yeah, let's take another call. But first, listeners, Vice City, remember, don't behead your girlfriend and take her head around on a stick. Hello, you're on K-Chat with Thor. Hey, brother, my name is TJ. Your book is fresh, real fresh. Like, it's been a real inspiration and all that. It's most definitely on me and my crew's vibe. And that Loki brother, he's as slick as Salivex. You know what I mean, Trooper? In fact, me and my boys have started a Thor fan club. You know what I'm rapping? We're on your vibe, man. Aye, a Thor fan club. This pleases Thor very much. I shall speak of myself in the third person from now on. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't really into school all that much. But I hear you, Thor. So, so anyway, we have this fan club, right? And instead of naming it something like the Vice Lords of Valhalla, we gave it, like, a modern name. Keeping things firmly in the 80s, you know? The Bloods. Ain't that off the wall, man? We follow your teachings to the letter, sir. Especially how you go around smiting fools with that wild mad hammer of yours and getting people to know exactly what time it is, you hear? Have you a magic hammer? Nah, T. We don't have any olden types around here to strap us with super fly hardware like yours, but we do have MAC-10s, Tech-9s, tray 8s, Street Sweepers, and all that. Are you still on my vibe, brother? Aye, I like the sound of this. Methinks I want to join your group. Do you pillage proper? Hell yeah! We do it like a Viking. You ought to come party with us. We'll even make you an honorary blood. Word. Ah, indiscriminate pillaging. This is, as we say, the school of old. When I am done with the wench, we shall meet. Till then, beware the frost giant, TJ, and the serpent with two tongues. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Yo, brother, where'd you land that funky fresh silver helmet of yours? Those wings on the side are wicked, money. Stop calling me a wench. I have much if you would listen. For many centuries, people have asked questions. Why is my fatted calf gone after the gypsy woman appeared? Are there trolls living in my chimney? Aye, sure, I could tell ye the story of the twelve children on a platter, or the midsummer snow, and the spirit hatched from a cock's egg. 
But in the end, Amy, you need a spirit journey. A wandering spirit demands a wandering body. Take a long boat. Pack only what you can carry. Head toward the moon at high tide. Okay, thanks for the advice. And with that revelation, I'm going to have to change topics. That was Thor, Viking Warrior. Coming up next, we have another guest. We'll be back right after this. How do you like to enjoy a Rusty Brown's Ring Donut? I like to lick lovingly around the outside and then thrust my tongue in the middle. I like to munch it vigorously. I just love the batter all over my face. On Friday nights, I just can't stop eating Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Oh my god, it's so good. Sometimes I like to wear women's panties and walk around Fifth Street. When you go downtown, make sure you enjoy Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Hi, I'm Jeremy Robar, entrepreneur, VIP, and founder of the revolutionary program, Think Your Way to Success. It's a three-step program that's been changing lives and my income for the last two years. Five years ago, I was a nobody, just like you. After my Think Your Way to Success program, I spend the entire weekend in my jacuzzi or engaging in the exciting sport of domino toppling. Hey, if you can think it, you can do it. One of my award-winning courses is sure to be perfect for you. The first course I call Think, Hold That Thought, Complete, because that's what you do. Step two is known as Learn, Start, Doing, where I explain the mysteries of starting. Or take the new accelerated course that will have you laughing and hugging strangers. Motivate, demonstrate, then motivate again. Just listen to these endorsements, and remember, these people volunteered. They aren't being paid much. I've been on the Think Hold That Thought Complete program, and I have to say, I'm finally going to start my career in being a well-paid rich person. Yeah, I've been thinking my way to success for a while now. It's some good stuff. Call now and sign up for my Think Your Way to Success program. And if you want to think really fast, try my Crank It Out program. Call 1-866-434-SELF. Hey, don't just do it. Think about it. Sweaty leather tracksuit? Absurdly fat Daglo laces? Something missing? Complete the look with a replica car sign insignia on a chunky gold plate chain at Vice City's one-stop shop for people who know how to put the hip into hip-hop. Wow, you look fresh. Complete the look. God, can we play more commercials on this station? This station is about me. What? Oh, <laughs> hi, I'm Amy. So right. We're back. I'm here with like, oh my god, this is so exciting. But now I'm here with Jazz Torrent, a rock god, all the way from Scotland, England. So Jazz, I'm sorry. As you can tell, ooh, I'm a really huge fan of Love Fest. Hey, 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 hey. Didn't he say sorry, babe? You are a woman of substance, and I like that. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. That's cool. And, oh, Jazz. Who is that thing with you? I didn't mind Mandy. I think she's zoning out a little bit, aren't you, man? Look, she's got to take me 24-7, you know what I'm saying? Poor lassie. She's had a turn of jazz more than one girl can take. Eh? Say hello, man. Hi, Paul. Ringo. Where are we? Uh, the rock lifestyle hasn't been too good to her. Man, just go away and sit in a lobby until I've finished, hen. Check the fridge. Is she okay? I mean, apart from being an ugly, cheap cow, she looks half dead. I see. Hey, hey, hey. Seriously, man. Didn't cramp my style. I'm an artist, you know. Uh, okay, Jazzy. So, Jazz, I was listening to your album on my boombox all weekend. Like, how is it? Uh, I mean, you know, you're really totally famous. No, wait. I mean, like, so anyway, how are you? It's cool, man. I'm cool. Things are good. You can't OD on love, and I have tried. The tour is really something special. You Americans, you really know how to rock and roll, man. No way back home. I'm so confused. Is that because the new album didn't do so well in the UK? It's that fascist Thatcher. A thing about working class people trying to make it through...